Today we're talking about the Green Hornet. For the most part, I'm going to focus on the TV show that aired during the late 60s on ABC television, but I'll briefly discuss a handful of other things as well. Plus, I've got a couple of video treasure nuggets that I think you're going to enjoy. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi folks, my name is Dave Sundstrom, and I like to think of myself as something of a pop culture historian, especially when it comes to music, movies, and television. Simply put, I love talking about this stuff. So with that said, let's get rolling. Believe it or not, The Green Hornet was a spin-off of sorts to The Lone Ranger. Britt Reed's father, Dan Reed, is The Lone Ranger's nephew. So how does this work? How is there any sort of connection between the two? Well, the creators of The Lone Ranger radio program, they were also involved in the creation of The Green Hornet radio show, and that's how it happened. Personally, I love the idea that the two heroes are connected. It gives both of the characters a deeper, more rich backstory. And there are lots of reasons that I loved the Green Hornet TV series growing up. Despite its relatively short run on television, the TV show with Bruce Lee as Cato and Van Williams as the Hornet was really well executed and a lot of fun to watch. Why is this man sought by those on both sides of the law? I've got to get away! Tell me who has the gun and your life is guaranteed. You have my word. Let me warn you about the Green Hornets. I could flood the world diamond market with your perfect imitations. I can make you millions. He's not the two-bit kind of thug you're used to dealing with. He's clever and he's dangerous. Master criminal or brilliant crime fighter. Who is the Green Hornet? The Green Hornet in color on ABC. I loved the theme music, the Black Beauty, and all of the Green Hornet's other amazing gadgets like the Hornet Sting which would unlock any door and render other devices useless. So this show was a spin-off of the Batman TV series. Not that there was any sort of direct relation prior to the show, but because it was the same television production team, basically they went to the well a second time hoping to have the same type of success that they'd had with Batman. Although this was a very different show. Batman was camp and there was a lot of humor in it. Humor that adults would pick up on while kids would pick up on the action and adventure. With the Green Hornet they decided to not go that route. They went with a more serious take on the character. And just as Batman had his Batmobile, the Green Hornet had the Black Beauty. It was a 1966 Imperial Crown sedan customized by a guy named Dean Jeffries. At the time the cost to retrofit the vehicle was around thirteen thousand dollars and two of these cars were built for the show both of them are still in existence one of them is in an automotive museum the other has been fully restored and is in a private collection in south carolina of course most of us know now that bruce lee became a major movie star due to his incredible martial arts prowess in fact lee's popularity in hong kong was so huge at the time of making the Green Hornet that when the show was marketed over there, they didn't call it the Green Hornet, it was called the Cato Show. Now imagine if Burt Ward had been so popular over here in the US that the Batman TV show had been called Robin the Boy Wonder. Holy messed up title, Batman. Another fun fact about Bruce Lee was that the episodes on Batman where the Green Hornet and Cato were introduced now, they had a scene where Robin and Kato fight, and originally the script was called for Robin to get the best of Kato, but Bruce wasn't going to hear of that. He knew his fans would recognize that there was no way that Burt Ward could really have emerged victorious. Because of that, the script was revised to have the two characters battle it out to a draw. Sadly, the Green Hornet TV series only ran for a single season. While the ratings for the show weren't abysmal, they weren't stratospheric as Batman's were during the first season and a half of that show, and as a result, the network never had the same level of enthusiasm for the Green Hornet. But I really do think that the show deserved a second season. And the show deserved to run for a full hour. 30 minutes just wasn't enough for the kind of character development that this show richly deserved. Although Batman and Robin never returned the favor by showing up on the Green Hornet TV show, the two crime-fighting duos have reunited. Just a few years back, director Kevin Smith brought the Green Hornet back to life in a comic book titled Batman Meets the Green Hornet. The issues were drawn by a really well-known artist named Ty Templeton, and the covers were drawn by someone even more well-known, a legend in the comic books industry. His name is Alex Ross. These things are a ton of fun. If you haven't taken a look at the Batman 66 comic book series, 
it's a wonderful way to go back and revisit a simpler, more innocent time of TV and of comics. As long as we're talking about the Green Hornet, I'm curious what you thought about the relatively recent big screen remake that starred Seth Rogen. Truthfully, I didn't mind it, but I don't think it captured the magic of any of the earlier versions of these characters. Still, I don't mind it when Hollywood gives it a try, and I hope that at some point in the future, they try again. Alright, for those of you that were super observant, you may have noticed around the middle of the video I promised a fun surprise for those folks who stuck around to the very end. Well, here it is. ABC, where I'll be seeing you in the Green Hornet. I am Bruce Lee, inviting you to join me every Friday night on most of these ABC stations. Alright, one more picture of the Black Beauty. It is such a cool vehicle. Okay, please share your memories in the comments section, and if you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane, please give it a thumbs up. That's how I'll know if I should make more videos like this one. Also, I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.